Morals are everywhere. Here's a moral, here's another, and another. Look, a moral here, and a moral there. I mean, they're everywhere, and you probably need one too. To create one is actually surprisingly easy. All I have is an empty body element in my index.html, my CSS is totally empty, and my JavaScript is totally empty. Back in my index.html, all we need is two elements, a button with an ID called open modal that displays open modal, and a dialog element with an ID which I'll call dialog. This is literally all we need to create a modal. The button will open our modal, and the dialog element is our modal because the dialog HTML element itself is actually a modal built in to the HTML language. My modal is currently empty, so I'll add an h2 element that displays hello world. When I click on my open modal button, we see nothing happens. This is because we still need to tell it to open our modal. To do so, I'll head over to my main.js, which by the way, I'm already importing in my HTML. I'll create a variable called open button, and I'll select our button by its ID of open modal. I'll create a new variable called dialog, and I'll select our modal by its ID of dialog. Now, all we need to do is add an event listener on our button. It's going to be a click event, and for the second argument, I'll use an arrow function for our callback. I'll grab our dialog element, and specifically on dialog elements, there's a built in method called show modal, which I'll append on our dialog. When I save and click on my open modal button, we see it now opens our dialog, and we also see our dialog is already styled. We didn't add any CSS yet, my CSS file is still empty, and yet our dialog element is being presented as a modal. The dialog element, along with its show modal method, are new additions to the web. Where previously we had to build modals from scratch, now modals are just built in, and it makes creating them much easier. Looking at our modal, we see we're missing a close button. There's no button currently to close our modal. However, despite that, because modals are built into the web, they have built in accessibility features. And one example of these features is to close my modal. What I can do is just press escape on my keyboard and we see it closes our modal. Of course, I still want to add a button to close our modal. So in my index.html under our h2 element, I'll add a button with an ID called close modal and that displays close. Back in my main.js, I'll create a variable called close button, and I'll select our new button by its ID of close modal. I'll create a new event listener on our close button. It'll be a click event, and for the callback function, I'll grab our dialog element, and I'll append to it the close method, which is also a built-in method for dialog elements, just like the show modal method. Now, when I open my modal, we have a close button, and when I click on it, it closes our modal. And with that, we already have all the functionality you would expect from a modal. The only thing left for us to do is to style our modal, because by default, it doesn't look very good. In my CSS, the first thing I'll do is I'll select everything with the universal star selector, and I'll give everything a margin of zero and a padding of zero. This reset is probably something everyone watching this video does in their own code bases. Pretty much everybody resets the margin and the padding on all elements, and the reason I'm pointing this out is because when I save and look at my modal, we see this one small reset that essentially everybody uses totally broke our modal. Resetting the padding wasn't really problematic, however, resetting the margin uncentered our modal. I'll open my developer tools and I'll inspect the dialog element. We see the dialog element has a bunch of default styles, and by applying a margin of zero on everything, We've overwritten the default margin on our dialog element. The default margin on our dialog was responsible for centering our dialog, and so to fix it, I'll select our dialog element, and I'll give it a margin of auto. When I save, we see our modal is back to being centered. I'll also give our modal a padding of 2 rem, a border of none, and a border radius of 6 pixels. Another thing you'll notice in our developer tools is that the dialog element has this thing called a top layer. The top layer is a specific layer created by the browser that spans the entire width and height of the viewport and that pushes our modal on top of all other content on the page. This is another example of a feature that we would have previously had to implement ourselves, but with the dialog element is just built in. But this feature actually unlocks another feature 
We see instead of our dialogue, we have this pseudo element called backdrop, and the backdrop pseudo element just so happens to only work on top layer elements. And so what we can do is select the dialogue element, append to it the backdrop pseudo element, and I'll give it a background color of RGBA 000 0 0.8. When I save, we see it darkened everything under the top layer of our dialogue. I'll close my developer tools for now. And now what I want to do is use a nicer font and make my close button look nicer. So I'll select the body element and I'll give it a font family of system UI. I'll select the button element. I'll give it a background of none, a border of none, a font of inherit, because if you didn't know, buttons, if you don't tell them to, won't inherit the font we defined on the body element by default. And finally, a cursor of pointer. I'll head over to my HTML. I'll give my close button a class called button. And then back in my CSS, I'll select our close button by its class name of button. And I'll give it a background color of black, a color of white, a padding of 0.5 rem for the top and bottom, and one rem for the left and right, a border radius of six pixels, and a font weight of 500. When I save, we see our button looks a lot better. Models usually have a paragraph, so in my HTML, under our h2 element, I'll add a paragraph with a class called description, and I'll give it some filler text. When I save and look at our model, we see the model expanded in size to account for the new paragraph. To fix this, the natural impulse would be to give a width to the model. However, as a general rule, you should let the content implicitly size your elements. And therefore, instead of giving a width to my model, what I'll do is back in my CSS, I'll select our paragraph by its class name of description, and I'll give it a max width of 40ch. When I save, we see we're limiting the number of characters our paragraph can have on one line with the ch unit. But more importantly, the content is still responsible for implicitly sizing our dialogue element. Our paragraph would look better with some space above and below it, so I'll give it a margin of 1 rem for the top and bottom, and 0 for the left and right. Our model looks great. However, it would look better with some animations. I'll open my developer tools, and looking at the dialogue element, we see when it's open, it receives this open attribute, and when it's closed, the open attribute gets removed. This attribute can be used to select our model specifically when it's open. This presents an opportunity for animations, and we're even going to use two new CSS features to create this animation. There's actually two things we need to animate individually, the model itself and the backdrop. Because they're animated separately, I'm temporarily going to remove the backdrop by giving it a background of none. With the backdrop removed, our modal has the same background color as the body, so I'll give my modal a border of 1 pixel solid black temporarily. I want my modal to fade in and fade out, and I want to use transitions. So what I'm going to do is I'll give my dialog a default opacity of 0. And then I'll select our dialog specifically when it's open by compounding the open attribute on my selector. And I'll give it an opacity of 1. Now I also need to give my dialog a transition of opacity and 0 0.3 seconds. When I save and open my modal, we see it doesn't work. Our modal isn't fading in or out. And this is because when we open our modal, it goes from a display of none to being displayed. And when I close our modal, it goes from being displayed to a display of none. These changes to the display property happen immediately. And because they happen immediately, it doesn't leave any time for the opacity to transition, which of course leads us to the first new CSS feature we're going to be using. Since our transition doesn't have time to take effect because the display property changes instantaneously, we need to tell the display property to be part of the transition. The first impulse would be to replace opacity with all. And when I do and save, we see it still doesn't animate. And this is because although all does include the display property, the display property is not a property that can be animated, or at least not by default. To allow the display property to be part of our transition, we need to add allow discrete to our transition. What allow discrete does is it allows all elements with an animate type of discrete to be part of the transition, whereas without it, CSS transitions can't directly handle discrete changes. 
the display property is one of those elements where under the hood, it is labeled as discrete. But now that we allow discrete changes in our transitions, when I save and open our modal, we see, although it doesn't animate when I open it, it does when I close it. Now, the fact that our modal isn't animating when we open it is not indicative of some problem with the allow discrete behavior, but it is instead more indicative of a larger problem, or rather, limitation with transitions in CSS. The way transitions work is they activate when a property it is listening to eventually changes. This is not news to you, everyone watching this video already knows this, however, there exists a caveat with this implementation under the hood. When a page initially loads, all elements receive their styles for the first time. This receiving of styles for the first time when the page loads is a change, and despite it being a change, transitions in CSS refuses to activate on this first initial styling of the elements. So in other words, it can be said that transitions don't activate when an element pops into existence for the first time. And this idea, this concept of popping into existence is exactly what you get when an element goes from a display of none to a display of block. So this is why when we open our modal, it doesn't animate. When we close our modal, it does in fact animate because for one, we've allowed the display property to animate by allowing discrete elements on our transition. But two, closing is allowed to animate because our modal, when comes time to close it, already exists. Whereas when we try to open it, it has to pop into existence, which transitions don't like. Transitions don't activate when an element pops into existence. And so this leads us to our second new CSS feature. We've established that transitions won't animate when an element pops into existence. This makes perfect sense because when an element pops into existence, there is technically no previous style to animate from. But what if we had a way of explicitly telling the browser what styles an element ought to have before it even pops into existence? That would be pretty godlike. And in fact, CSS does give us this power with the starting style at rule. Inside this at rule, we can select elements and give them the styles they ought to have before they even ever pop into existence. So I'll select my dialog with its open attribute and I'll give it an opacity of zero. And so now what we're saying is before the modal pops into existence, it ought to have an opacity of zero. And by doing this, now the transition property has a starting style to pick from. When I save and open my modal, we see it finally animates. By the way, VS Code doesn't recognize this at rule because it's a new feature in CSS, and that's why I'm getting squiggly lines. But although this feature is very new, it has good browser support, with Firefox being the only one trailing behind in implementing it, but it is coming soon to Firefox. Now we need to animate our backdrop. On my dialog, I'll remove the border, and in my backdrop, I'll remove the background of none and I'll uncomment our RGBA background color. When I save, we see our modal of course animates, but our backdrop still needs to be animated. Instead of a 0.8 alpha value, I'll default it to zero and I'll add a transition of all 0.3 seconds and allow discrete. I'll select our dialog with the backdrop again, but I'll compound the open attribute on my dialog selector and I'll give it an RGBA of 000, 0 0.8. Finally, I'll add the starting style at rule. I'll select our dialog open attribute backdrop and I'll give it a background color of RGBA. 0, 0, 0, 0. So we've essentially repeated the process, but for our backdrop. When I save and open our modal, we see the backdrop fades in, and when I close it, it fades out. Our modal is pretty much finished. There's only two small things I want to do. In my HTML, on my close button, I'll add the autofocus attribute so that this button autofocuses when we open our modal. And in my main.js, I want to add a function that allows us to close our modal when we click outside of it. Currently, with my modal open, I can close it by clicking on close or by pressing escape on my keyboard. However, if I click outside of my modal, you would expect it to close, but it doesn't. In my clipboard, I have the code. I'll just paste it and you can pause the video to copy it in your own code if you need to. 
Or even better, I'll have a link to a code pen in the description of this video with all the code that was written in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider joining the Discord server. The link is in the description. Like if you want, subscribe if you want, and thanks for watching.